Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today we're covering Claude Artifacts, Just the Useful Stuff. Are you watching the right video? Well, if you're interested in harnessing the newest, free, and actually useful capabilities of Claude Sonnet 3.5, then yes. Questions answered in today's video. Claude Sonnet 3.5, what are artifacts? How is Claude actually useful for everyday people? And we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's jump right in. So here we are at Claude. Josh, what is Claude Artifacts? What are Claude Artifacts? In any event, uh, it is a publishable second screen for your prompt results. And it generally will appear for you when it makes the most sense. And if for some reason it's not turned on, all you gotta do is come down here, click on your user icon, sorry, feature preview. And if it's not turned on here, you would turn it on. As you can see, it's not an option because it's been generally released to the public for free use with Claude Sonnet 3.5. All right, so let's try a prompt that's probably gonna generate or require artifacts. So I will type in my first prompt here. I'm asking it to review the attached paper, uh, which is a paper on prompting. And I'm gonna ask it to use React if necessary, because during filming previously, Claude forgot that it can do this. So use React if necessary if Claude's like, I can't run programs. Uh, in any event, so here we go. Review the attached paper, identify the key highlights, conclusions, and takeaways, then create an interactive dashboard representing this key information. And interactive dashboards are all the rage, uh, but this one seemed the, like the most useful, so let's go ahead and try this out. By all the rage, I mean a little bit overdone, but I knew this would uh, generate Claude's artifacts functionality, uh, and there's actually some useful information in here, so we're, we're just gonna roll with it. So key highlights from the paper, thank you so much, Claude. Key conclusions, key takeaways, now I'll create an interactive dashboard. So it ran the code last time, and then it just stopped. It's like, I can't run this code, I'm, I'm not capable. Um, but as long as you tell it to use React, uh, if it gets stuck for whatever reason, it's it's never this has never happened to me before, so useful to know. Uh, looks like there's some unsupported library icons detected. And so what's cool here is you can just take the error message, error, give it back to Claude, and Claude will be like, oh, my bad, uh, let me go ahead and fix this. And so hopefully that's what Claude does right now. Um, this is... Not something that happened to me previously, so we'll just see if this works. Um, Claude has obviously taken a little bit to think here. While it's, very good. Fixing the error, thank you, Claude. Once this dashboard is complete, uh, we'll have Claude make it better. And sometimes you can make it better by just saying, make it better. Uh, this, is, this is pretty handy here. So what we got here, highlights. Syst systematic review covers Okay, vocabulary, all right, conclusions. Okay, the last one had a graph. Every, every, every time it's different. All right, let me know if you'd like to make any changes or addition to this dashboard. So I could say make it better. It's often that works. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is ask it, what are the key takeaways for the casual user that just wants to achieve better results when interacting with or prompting an LLM? How can we all use this to get better in a simple way? Um, and so let's see how it takes this and updates the interactive dashboard. And like I said, it, um, this, this is of course thought out ahead of time, but just, just telling it to make it better uh, often produces great results. Once this is complete, we are going to create an artifact. So this is artifacts that we're looking at. We're gonna create an artifact. And I'll explain that in a second. So. Be clear and specific. When interacting with LLMs, be as clear and specific as possible in your instructions or questions. This helps the model understand your intent better. And so remember, all this information came from this 73 page, I think it was 73 page, 76 page paper, um, and just the highlights. Give relevant context or background, use examples, break down complex tasks, experiment with different phrasings, be aware of limitations, and consider ethical implications. 
and we could look through all those if we wanted to. We could also say make it better uh, one more time, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and publish this artifact by clicking publish down here, and then it's gonna give us a link. So what's it say here? Publishing this artifact will make it accessible to anyone on the internet. Your chat will remain private. So it won't see what we asked it, but it's gonna see, people will see the artifact. Be sure the artifact you're publishing doesn't include any personal or confidential, confidential information. So right now it's unpublished, only I have access. But then I can click the publish link button. So now it's published and I can copy the link. And so I can come over here, paste the link. You're viewing a user-generated artifact. Yes, please show it to me. And so I could send this link to somebody and now they can play around with the artifact. What's really cool is there's a remix button down here. So we're going to click on that. And now I can take what I've created and shared with me and I can, so it's going to run through all this stuff. I'm just going to ask it, make it better. Enhanced LLM interaction tips for casual users. And then once this is done, I'll show you how to unpublish should you decide to take down the artifact that you have shared with the World Wide Web. Okay, so we've given the button some color, some stars. It's just really doubling down on uh, the, the drop down here. No graphs this time. Ooh, advanced. So there you go. That's how you use artifacts. And so I'll jump back over to where we started. And maybe the unpublish button is right there. It is unpublish. All sets. So there's your artifacts. All right. So how is Claude actually useful? How can we, what things can we use Claude for that we might actually use in our day to day? And so I've tried to grab some things that, that would be helpful for all of us. I would also ask you to please see my other videos, description down below. Um, this is building on some of those other videos with the use of artifacts and not always using the artifacts. All right, so the, one of the first things that I wanna cover and I gotta get out of this, actually, yeah, so we'll start a new, new chat here. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is transcription tasks. And if you've ever wanted to just get all the thoughts out of your head, uh, so that you can kind of see them and think about them, or you just you had a phone conversation, you want to capture it, um, memorialize it, or you just you just want to say a bunch of stuff um, and have someone grab it and then and then then make it perfect grammatically and spelling and sentence structure. Um, this is how you could could do that, and so everything works better on mobile. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up Claude on mobile. So I've got it open here. And I'm going to tell Claude, hi Claude, comma, I am going to just spit a bunch of words at you and I would like you to take those words and clean them up grammatically and from a clean sentence structure perspective, period. All right, that's <laughs> uh, stream of consciousness. There you go. Um, not the greatest instructions, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to Claude. And Claude's smart, so Claude will understand. I understand. You'd like me to take a series of words you provide. And so he's he's understanding here. And what I'm going to do is just hit the refresh button. And so you can see what I just punched into Claude on chat. And so this is the conversation we were having on mobile, but now here on the computer. And so let's go ahead and give Claude my word salad. So this is something that perhaps just came out of my mouth. Uh, again, stream of consciousness. The sun beats down, relentless scorching pavement, feet burning, needs shade. Where's that coffee shop around the corner? Wasn't it just here last week? Was that a dream? Reality blurs. These days, time, time a construct. Blah, 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 blah. So we're going to go ahead and give Claude this information. Put it in nice paragraphs, clean up the grammar, clean up the sentence structure, and there you go. There's like a million different ways you could use this, uh, but voice dictation on your phone is of course key. Um, let's let's do another transcription tasks and task, and this is going to be uh, one with data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab, and this is from Ethan Mollick, by the way. He shared this on 
LinkedIn, I believe, or maybe it was one of his blog posts. Um, but super neat, so I wanted to share it here. All right, so we're going to use the first one, which is please transcribe the data in this film sales table of data. So it's just a screenshot of a table of data. So it's a picture. And we're like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like manually typing all this stuff out. So Claude, why don't you just go ahead and do that for me? So there we go. And then the second part of this is, so I want to pause. ChatGPT can provide a spreadsheet. I don't think Claude can has has. <laughs> I do not believe Claude can yet do that. I will create a spreadsheet like thing. Okay, so download the file. <laughs> it's a text file. I could paste this into a spreadsheet, so we're getting better. Uh, but not quite on par with ChatGPT. So if you need a spreadsheet, go to ChatGPT. And the uh, the final thing we're going to do here was have Claude graph the data. And so you see here again, it pops open artifacts. Really cool because what Claude's giving you, you can see on the right hand side, and also your prompts and things you need to adjust are on the left hand side. And then here we go, graphing the data. Hmm. Chat GPT still wins the day on this one. Uh, let's see. To visualize, clearly shows a rapid decline. We would need to work with Claude a little bit more to get this to work better. Claude can graph things, but has not succeeded here. So always remember your results may vary. All right. So data visualization or transcription and notes. So I take a lot of notes in my old analog notebook here. And sometimes I'm one of, I want them digitally captured as well as in what's in my notebook. And so this example applies to those situations. So let's go ahead and what I've done here is just literally just taken a picture of my notebook. And then I've asked Claude, please transcribe. What I want to highlight here is the ability to just use very short prompts. Um, models are getting smarter, and so the ability to use single word or very short phrases to get the model to do what you want, um, it works. So you can see here is my a, a screenshot of my notebook. Even does a little bit of formatting like I do, which is kind of neat. And there you go. And so this is a transcript of the conversation that I had uh, with an individual that's asking me to come talk about AI recently. And uh, if you're around on 18 September, you can come see that. Uh, in any event, uh, well done, Claude. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next task. So transcribing notes from your notebook, take the screenshot, share it with Claude on your phone, right? Everything on mobile is quicker and faster. Hey, give me this stuff. And then as you just saw there. All right, so notes from a notebook, finally, and this one is kind of, it's probably not new for you, but just as a reminder, Claude is a very, very good grammar and spelling fixer. So here's an email that I wrote, and I'm like, man, I don't type, I don't type the email so well. I need a little bit of help. And you can see here, there's a lot of misspellings and very bad grammar, and I'm asking Claude to fix. The highlight here is one word. Hey, Claude, can you do this for me? Here's a corrected version. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. Not a lot of prompting required. Fix. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move into what I call the thing explainer. And I got a couple examples for you, of course. Uh, again, highlighting the single word prompt or very short prompts to just get right to the results you're looking for. Um, and what I want to pause and talk about real quick is chat GPT. So Ethan Mollock uses the term GPT or general purpose technology. And he posits that these LLMs will become as ubiquitous as electricity. And so the point here is just getting used to using it for very simple day-to-day -day tasks like we're doing here. Um, one single prompt, boom, you get your results, move on to whatever else you are working on. Um, so nothing over-engineered. 
The first thing we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here is, a, so this is a picture I took in a coffee shop. And <laughs> I figured this is some type of coffee making contraption because you can see the coffee there, but I just didn't know what it was. So take a picture on your phone, share it with Claude. What is this? Um, and I'll try this, explain. Again, the ability to do things quickly, get the answers you need and move on with your day. This image shows a cold, ooh. Claude has never gotten this right until just now. Um, it always just explains it as being some type of coffee contraption. Cold brew coffee tower, which is a specialized device used for making cold brew coffee. Let me break down the key components. So good job, Claude. ChatGPT has been getting this right all day long. Claude just got it, so kind of neat. You saw it here first. <laughs> Claude identified the cold brew brewer. All right, thing explainer, a confusing med lab report. You ever get those reports from the VA or your doctor and you're like, this is neat, I don't understand it, but there's probably helpful information in here. And sometimes you'll get reports and you'll see previous years uh, stacked up in front of it and you're like, okay, the numbers are moving. I don't know what this means though. Well, of course, I have an example here with a, an example lab report. And I can just ask Claude to please analyze and provide a high level summary. I could have just written analyze as well. Um, but I'm trying to keep this high level. Last time, the model went into great detail, uh, more, more than we needed. OK, abnormal results, notable changes, screening tests, potential areas of concern. So I, I did, I, this, is a, this is not real data, um, but I did uh, elevate liver problems with some of the data in here. Of course, asking the models, hey, what should I change in this report to make it look like I'm in liver failure? So elevated AST and ALT suggest possible liver issues. Yeah, yeah. Blood sugar, nutritional status, low albumin indicate nutritional deficiency and anemia. So screening tests, normal but notable results, notable changes from... Notable changes from previous results. So here's the here are the numbers that I tweaked. Uh, in any event, you get medical results and you want to know what they mean. Ask Claude. Super cool. So the last explainer we're gonna use here or share here is a joke that I saw on LinkedIn. Um, Cameron Henneke posted this picture: GitHub Copilot before and after. And what you can't see down below is the tab has like a where it's it's worn the tab button is worn and i'm not a coder and so i saw this and i'm like there's there's a joke there don't get it but let's let's figure out what it was so screenshotted and then shared it with claude or actually it was maybe it was chat gpt in any event um so explain this joke the joke in this image is about github copilot which is an ai powered code completion tool the humor comes from the before and after comparison of a keyboard before the first image shows a normal keyboard with a tab key visible. After the second image shows the same keyboard with the tab key is blurred or worn out. The implication is that after using GitHub Copilot, developers use the tab key so frequently to accept AI generated code suggestions that the key becomes worn out or blurry from overuse. Thank you, Claude, for explaining that joke to this non coder. All right, finally, and I've not tried this with Claude, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, better than our graph from earlier. If you have to do something that requires a bunch of steps and it's not super clear or it is complicated and you would like Claude or an LLM to tackle this complex time-consuming task for you, let me share an example. So the Army Combat Fitness Test. If you fail this and then you want to retake it, there are rules and there are processes that you have to follow. There are also rules and processes you have to follow if you are going to basically remove somebody from the army for failing this too many times. And to read all the regulations is to want to gouge your eyeball out with a spoon. So instead of doing that, I would submit that you can, and I've got to make it better in there. <laughs> we'll go ahead and ask Claude, please reference all necessary army regulations and create a visual flowchart diagram detailing the procedures and timelines to follow after a soldier fails the ACFT or APFT. And I give them both because not all the literature is caught up to the ACFT yet. There's a lot of APFT stuff, but not, not all the literature is caught up to the ACFT, which is the newer test. 
use APFT information if ACFT information is not yet available. And so we're going to ask Claude, as you've seen, to diagram or provide a flow chart that explains how this works. Pretty cool. Publish this, copy link. Unfortunately, it's, <laughs> it is super dark. Um, but as you can see, so soldier fails ACFT, APFT. Is this the first failure, yes or no? Yes, initiate flag in accordance with the regulation. Flag already in place, enroll in ABCP, so on and so forth. And you, as you can see here, like this is why you wouldn't wanna read all this stuff, because it's makes your brain explode. Uh, but yeah, so use Claude for diagramming complex procedures. I don't know why it's so dark. Uh, hey, let's try this. Where were we here? Yeah. Make it brighter. Much better, much better. All right, so there we go. These are all the examples I wanted to share with you of how you could use Claude in your normal day-to-day -day life for things that are actually helpful and useful for you um, rather than creating interactive dashboards for your PDFs. All right, so at the beginning, I told you I'd answer, why should you care? So let's do that now. Why should you care? Why should you start using these new features? because each new model leapfrogs the last in usefulness. And those of us not learning with them as they leap forward are going to get left behind. Today's goal was to spark one idea about how you can actually use Claude day to day in the real world with an immediate impact. Why? This technology will soon be ubiquitous like electricity. Those of us through deliberate practice who by changing our defaults have learned to make AI our new default productivity option or our choiceless choice, we will be the ones producing at the new speed of life. As Ethan Mollick has said, humans that use AI will replace those that don't. And the only way to get good at AI is by using AI. So always invite AI to the table. All right. Thank you for watching. If you use any of these or you got some better ideas, share them, please. Love to hear that feedback. Please don't forget, lots of link goodness in the description below. If you like, subscribe, and share, I appreciate you. And please, if you have questions, leave them, and I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.